Hey, welcome back to the channel. I can't believe that I get another day where I can just spend a couple hours in the shop here working on the airplane, which uh, I can't surf, so get arrested out there. So it's, uh, or sighted or something. Probably only get arrested if you're belligerent, but uh, anyway, it's just not a good idea to uh, push those limits. But any, anyway, I uh, got this, uh, I took this, all the, clamps off and I'm just super happy with uh, I don't know if you can see in there but I'm pretty excited about just how everything came out um, good good glue uh, good epoxy um, everywhere when I see nice shiny nice shiny fillets along the edge of a piece um, then I know uh, I know I did a good job so yeah so that's uh, that's ready to go and guess uh, Guess who forgot to bring the Dremel tool again? Um, I uh, got out with everything except for that, but that's okay. There's plenty of other things to do. These uh, um, in behind, in behind each of these on, on this gusset side, each of these sections actually gets a piece of a uh, um, quarter by half that basically goes flush with the top of the uh, top of the ribs, and it gets epoxied to. Um, to the plywood here and it gets epoxy here to the corner to the gussets. So um, That's what I will work on first. I have to take a couple pieces of that and turn it into uh, something that works um, For this because I have some kind of uh, inch and a quarter by uh, inch and a quarter By a quarter which I'm going to reduce down to what I need and I was going to show you um there are two tools that Rockler makes that if you're if you're scratch building and uh, wow this light's really strong give me one second all right <clears throat> if you're scratch building um, these are two tools that uh, I'm not sure I could do without I mean first it's great if you invest in a nice table saw and um, this particular one that I have which is a, is a skill saw. Um, it's kind of a, it's a worm drive um, skill saw. I actually, I really like it. I mean, of all the table saws I've had that are somewhat mobile like this, um, I like this one a lot. And it, uh, it actually has a couple features that are really nice, like, like this expands. Um, you can release this lever, expand this out this out for when you're cutting sheet and stuff and uh, that really helps a lot um, and uh, but really this is the this is the tool that I'm referring to it's this thin rip uh, table saw jig and uh, let me crank up the uh, wheel here just a little bit uh, just so you can see this what you do I, I know before when I would cut thin material um, by the way, this isn't plugged in, so um, when I would cut thin material, I would actually cut on the inside between the blade and the fence, and this really revolutionized how I cut thin material, and what you do is you take the outside kerf of the saw blade, you move this in to what distance you want, if it's quarter inch material or whatever, you just bring this in to wherever you want, you lock this in place. Um, uh, voicemail um, you lock this in place and uh, and then you're actually cutting on the outside of your of your board so let's just grab a piece of anything here as an example um, if I was going to cut whatever distance I set that at off of this you bring this back here once you get once you take this measurement and you get from there's a roller bearing right there you get uh, from the roller bearing to the blade, what width you want. And then when you bring it out here, all you have to do is move your, uh... actually I'm not on the feed side, let's try it over here. It's gonna go this way, there we go. All you do is you take, uh, you set your fence to where the piece of material you're working with sits right against your bearing and you lock it in place. And then when you feed it, feed it through, Number one, the bearing is uh, helping it ride against the fence without moving. It can't move, actually. 
um, because this is in place. And uh, so you're ripping the, the small piece you need off the outside edge of the material and it, it just works beautifully. And I'm gonna, um, I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you when I cut, uh, when I cut some of the uh, material that I need to cut because I'm gonna cut the pieces I need for this wing and I'm also gonna cut the pieces I need for the next wing for the same reason as yesterday. So I don't have to cut when I get to that wing, I can just fly through it. Um, because basically you will have already seen a wing built so there won't be any reason to show you a second one um, but I'll have I'll try and do some other things along the way as well so uh, but the second one will go really fast it's, everything's cut everything's ready and uh, yeah all right so I'll get uh, set up here grab some material and uh, we'll cut a couple things After you get your first piece cut, um, you're, uh, you're already established at your half inch from here. So if you have another piece that you're ripping off of, all you have to do is put it in, um, loosen your fence, move your fence over to where it's uh, touching your piece. Um, and then uh, tighten it back down. And now you're set to now you're set at the exact same distance from the blade as you were the first time and then you just rip your next piece and that's the way I cut all of my dimensional lumber this tool for like 25 bucks maybe I don't remember the exact cost but um, just so valuable uh, I would uh, Highly recommend it. Okay, now that those four are cut, I'm going to, um, we have to go in here and I'm gonna actually measure for um, what size to cut these necks since they go in between these two. Um, I'm gonna take an average, or not not average, I'm gonna find my longest distance um, between all of these gussets all the way down, and uh, that will allow me, I'll take a measurement both top and bottom, because they go, they go down here and they go up here, and I'm gonna find my longest distance. And at least for these, uh, for these pieces, um, I've got uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. For those 18 pieces, I'll cut them all in the chop saw at the same time. I'll just set a block at the distance I need and then cut all those. Um, and then I'll probably add 16th of an inch or something um, and I'll cut all the ones for the next wing as well. Everyone's gonna have to be, have to go to the sander and be custom fit anyway. So I'm just going to find my longest distance and add just a little bit, and I'll go. Uh, I'll go from there, and I'll just go to the go to the sander, hit the wheel, and uh, fit them. And I'll probably just bring the sander over closer so I can just quickly turn around and do that. But I don't have to tell you that. You'll see all that anyway. So, all right, cool. Let's do it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to clamp a piece of wood on here. I've already made sure I'm square here, so I'm good there. 
but I'm going to just clamp a piece of wood to the edge so that I know that I'm staying square to the wheel and um, and then I'll uh, be able to just easily uh, slide my pieces in here as I need to take a little off I'll just be able to easily slide them in and I know they'll be square because um, <clears throat> each one since I'm a little bit oversized is going to be a custom fit so good thing about having your tools on wheels you can just roll them around as I go and uh, it'll make everything real efficient I'm just only from here to here and uh, I won't have to walk back and forth to the sander a lot um, yeah so I'll uh, I'll get this do is uh, I'm gonna get all my clamps out kind of get them in place here and then I'll figure out uh, I'll probably just use a piece of wood underneath uh, something like just get a nice uh, nice straight piece of wood and then I'll be able to use that on top uh, as I'm positioning uh, positioning these It'll give me a stop so I know how high to go. Then I'll be able to get that uh, be able to get that clamp in place and then when it's all uh, done I'll just come back and just make sure make sure everything is uh, flush with the top and bottom edge. Just kind of like that. And a little epoxy uh, epoxy all those in place and that kind of squares everything up and provides a tremendous amount of strength in this uh, this plywood spar so that was right and I just arranged them um, I just used some clamps on my bench to create a little shelf to hold my uh, hold the spars for the next wing and uh, I'm kind of using it as a tray as well so I got the bottom one here the top one here everything's set I'll get the clamps out and um, get those in where I can easily get to them. And then it's time to mix epoxy, which is kind of one of my favorite times. I mean, when I get to grab those two bottles and squeeze them into the things and put it in the cup, and uh, I get pretty excited about that. All right, cool. All right, so I've mostly seen this done um, using clothes pens. I don't happen to have any closed pens. I actually have these kind of inexpensive uh, clamps that I bought at um, Harbor Freight. And so what I noticed when I was clamping them on, in order for me to feel good about the pressure um, that it's providing, because in some cases the plywood, you know, it bows a little bit, so it's got a little bow to it. Um, it actually takes nine of them to uh, hold that correctly. So I'm just going to do um, I can go buy a bunch more of these later, but at least for now, I'm just going to go as far as I can uh, with what I have. And um, yeah, we'll get those. We'll get those, those epoxied in place, and then uh, I'll buy a bunch more clamps. And so next time you see me, we'll finish up this whole process, and I won't forget my Dremel tool. And we'll actually be able to uh, work on getting the, the root and tip rib installed so all right cool i'll get to mixing this up and um we'll at least get some of these in place all right cool we
All right, so that's, uh, I'm all set here. These are all glued in place. Um, made sure they're level at each of these locations with the top of the rib, um, and all looks good. So we got through six of those, so I'm going to need a bunch more uh, clamps, but that's okay. They're super inexpensive, and uh, um, they work uh, just as well as uh, closed pens. So anyway, thanks so much for checking out the video today. Um, I know I've been able to stack a few here together. Um, I don't know if this week I'm going to be able to get... Uh, I might get a couple of opportunities during the week to come in at night and, um, and do some... Uh, do some more but either way we'll just keep moving forward i mean that's how you build these things you just you just take on one step at a time and you just keep working your way through it and before you know it you got an airframe sitting there so anyway i hope uh i hope you learned something today um or at least you found it interesting and if you're not a subscriber i invite you to subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss one of these and as always i'll catch you later